And number five, typography. Oh. Employ typography with intention and with restraint. Ooh. Right? And that's that's key. Everybody yes. can just go to Daffont and download everything and throw it all on there. But only David Carson can get away with it. Yeah, that's right. The rest of us yeah, we uh, don't no. even think about it. Right. <laughs> You're listening to The Angry Designer, where we cut through the industry bull to help frustrated graphic designers survive and thrive. Quintessential designer, like maybe a little hoity-toity, mm-hmm. maybe a little arrogant, but how not? You know, how can you not be? Right. Legend. He's you legend. Know, definitely. So does that get to you? Do you think that gets into your head and thinking like... But here's the thing. It's like, how many times have we talked to designers who seem to be down to earth and regular... All the designers we talked to That's what I'm saying, yes. Right, and that's why Paul Rand, I resonated with him so much, because he Mm -hmm. was pretty down, he was kind of, you know, crotchety old guy, but 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 he he was very much, apparently, you know, down to earth, pretty like, you know, blue collar guy. And and, and Massimo Vignelli's views on design felt very blue collar. Right. But I don't think he carried himself that As way or, collar. you know, thought of himself that way. I think he was really, you know, really, really thought highly of design in general. And, yes. and I think that, that maybe is why, you know, like the, you know, the but you know, I, I also read stuff that, you know, people said that working with him, he was a, a gentle guy. Mm-hmm. He was very gracious. He was very nice. Yeah. He just came across a little different in interviews. That's yeah. all. I, I mean, again, I've never, I never met him. Yeah, so I no, can't yeah, say. Who, who knows? Right? Yeah. Exactly. So it'd be interesting to talk to people who did. Uh, yeah, like totally. Like was it, was was Paul Asher not one under an understudy of his? Not or, sure, but it I'm, was wasn't it Beirut? Oh, it was Michael Beirut. I think it was right. Beirut, right? Yes, you're yeah, right. it'd be interesting to find out from him. Mind you, I mean, wouldn't that be the biggest slap in the face? Talking to someone like Michael Beirut, but being like, So uh what's it like? You know, working oh. for Massimo Vignelli. <laughs> Yeah, like, I bet you he has fielded that question though. No, I'm sure he has. Because this but, guy, this guy is the legend. Yes. In, in our space, right? yeah. And he did, and he and he left so many marks in the design space, right? With his whole the philosophies, how he brought. Like, I mean, again, I think you know, grandfather of graphic design yeah. as we know it. Yes. Yeah. I think is safe to say. Like he added so much, you know, practical ways of thinking about design. I mean, there's so much to the way he thought about design yes. that, you know, I mean, I, I get, I love Paul Renz, you know, the oh, way yeah. he thought about stuff. So yeah. I, I mean, all these guys were fantastic, but you know, it's, it's like Massimo actually put principles in place, put yes. views in place, which right. is a little interesting. Yes. Yeah. Like he, of all the designers, he's kind of, he's kind of the guy that, you know, you, you, you associate that. Uh, that absolutely. The grid, right? right. The grid pattern. hundred no, percent. No one else talks about that. Nope. Not that I know of, but no, nope. I think that's where that all kind of stems and, yeah, from. And we'll get into how, how that came about, which was cool. But, you know, his whole belief in the grid system mm-hmm. and everything else and yeah. the design, you know, the, the whole design is one concept. I mean, he brought so much to this mm-hmm. that, you know, I, I mean, I, I think it's fair to say that, you know, like, I don't know if there's been any other graphic designers that have left a mark like he has. No. In like learnings. Yes. Okay. There have been designers who have left incredible staples, um, you know, incredible work yeah. to be, you know, like wowed about and, and, you know, their cool views on how to approach it. But, yes. but what, you know, Massimo Vignelli seemed to have left was like literally like almost blueprints yes. on how to. Right. And, you know, secrets to to incredible design. So I think that's yeah. that's why this was like an interesting thing to talk about today. I mean, totally. it was totally weird coming off of, you know, chatting with Dan. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. again, like big, totally uh, yeah. styles are so opposite, right? Yes. Link and fucking rocks. <laughs> yeah, totally. And uh, and and a lot of people enjoyed that episode. And now somehow we're going from Dan and yeah. Lincoln to Massimo <laughs> Vignelli and Vignelli and Associates, right? <laughs> like it couldn't be in the opposite. But yeah. but again, you know, we we constantly go on about um, you know, what's old is new. Learn totally. from the old, learn from old designers. And I still yes. believe that that's I think that's the key yeah. to and, almost you know, yeah. And we didn't ask Dan, but I'll lay dollars to donuts that that guy's a huge Vignelli fan. Oh, probably like, like right. You look at his logos. They're they're a modern take on that simplistic. 
yeah kind of yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know what you mean yeah, yeah absolutely like i mean again and, and he comes up all the time and mm -hmm. comes up in conversations and, and you know like and again he's done so much not just for graphic design but to, i don't know it's just kind of crazy mm -hmm. so funny how we ended up yeah, here so yeah, totally and, this is great though and it's christmas time <laughs> yes. so we're drinking out of christmas glasses yeah, so cheers to this and yet we're talking about massimo vignelli today we got a classic here mm -hmm. Mm. Oh, and a classic go. drink today, of a course. Classic drink. You know, we're having Maker's classic Mark. Classic designer, classic drink. Um, you know, I just I just want to point out that, you know, it, it's pretty sad mm -hmm. when you walk into a liquor store and an LCBO and be like, had it, had it, had yes. it, yeah. had it. Had, yeah. and, and the further down you go. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is when I finally was like, you know what, let's just keep it easy. Go to Maker's Mark. <laughs> I must have been there for about 15, 20 minutes. Go up to the cash register and it's an old timer there, yeah, you know. Yeah. And he's like, you waited all that time, time and this, this is what <laughs> And I was like, you know, I was like, it's Just pretty bring sad. Me up, old man. <laughs> it's pretty sad when, you know, like yeah. you tried it all yeah. and you're looking. He's like, yeah, we don't have a big selection out here. <laughs> like, but, you know, Maker's Mark is always a, 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 a good, good, good trusted yep. you know uh, bourbon respectful yep. and and we haven't had it in probably all year i think no it's been a long time and it's kind of like an old friend you know it's honestly it is yeah, right it's really that good. Nice i like caramel it. smell i forgot how Compared nice it is to the last couple of yes ver um, um whiskeys and, and bourbons and that bourbons we've had, and scotch yeah they, 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 the last one was really good but it was hard it to, was hard to get right? into that groove that was that, that this bib and tucker is, right yes, and, yes. and i really I did it. enjoy it a lot i liked it it was really good but this very different than this bourbon yeah. right this is yeah. smooth it's you know it's got that rich caramel what you know like that that flavor that bourbon's yeah. known for right yes. it's and you know what and it makes for a nice present and this yeah. is a nice christmas present look yeah, at it totally it's all yes comes with glasses two beautiful all. glasses yeah, yeah. wow well, well yeah. merry christmas <laughs> yeah. the merry beginning christmas. of the season <laughs> cheers oh, oh, oh. so yeah so so going back to our topic then today it's mm -hmm. like um you know what it, it's it's i i don't think enough people you know, actually pay respect to the beliefs and where some of these guys came from. Right. Right. And even more so how they apply to today's design. Yes. Right. Because I think a lot of people, you know, not a lot of people, not, not a lot of angry designers, <laughs> but I think a lot of a lot of designers on a whole underestimate how these design principles of literally 40, 50 years ago still apply mm -hmm. to modern day design like what we're working on and so that's that's what i think we're here to talk about like you know number one you know we're definitely going to talk about massimo vignelli mm -hmm. that's the whole premise of this show right? right yeah um i'm going to just you know throw out there a little bit of you know some of my favorite quotes because the guy was so deep and he was like a philosopher it's, he is infinitely quotable and everything right? he says is just like should be engraved in a tablet. I know, right? And, <laughs> and the funny thing is, often his quotes are because he used to make all those, you know, all those posters mm -hmm. that still look just as good today as they did thirty years mm -hmm. ago with his quotes on there, yes. right? So we're gonna do that, and then yeah. and then I uh, I kind of put together what I see as you know his five principles or his ethos, you know, based on design and, and kind of, you know, after everything I've, I've learned and researched and just appreciate from the guy, you know, what I've kind of summed it up to. Yep. And then last but not least, how these five apply to modern day examples. I mean, I've got like, I think a list of 12 or 13 direct examples on how his principles, his ethos apply to what we're doing today we're and what we're today. seeing today. And, and, you know, again, the, the dude, unfortunately died like what, 15 years ago yeah, now? He's been dead for a while. little yeah. while. So, I mean, again, before the rise of the internet to, to what we know, mm. you know, social, he didn't even really know what that was. He right. wasn't around for that, let alone right. UI and shit. So, mm. so I'm taking all that and then how we apply to that. Right? Yeah. So shall we get started? Let's go. Go mean chair. <laughs> All right. So I'm not sure how many people know this or not, okay? But his whole intent, he was, you know, intended to be an architect. Right. Right? His beginnings mm -hmm. were, you know, from architect. Uh, arch he had architectural beginnings. Right. He went to school first in Milano. Milano. Okay. Mm -hmm. For architecture. Nice. Okay. And then um, after he did that, he went to un well, University of Milano. And then he went to University in Venice, ah. which Venice was pivotal, right? Not just, you know, it was, it was, he also went to school for architectural and design in mm -hmm. Venice. Okay. Oh. And, and it was um, twofold. So number one, that's where he met. 
his wife, Leela, oh. who was his partner for life and partner in business. She was a designer as well, right? She was. She was yeah. an architect. She an came architect. from uh, a very famous architectural family. So oh. it, that ran, right? So that's And that's what she was going to school for. So number one, that's where he met her. And then number two, it was in Venice where, you know, his he, he started exploring other types of design because mm. he was only, you know, in the belief that he was going to be an architect at this mm -hmm. time, right? Yeah. So this was his schooling, right? And um, it was it was Venice that introduced him to the possibility that there's more than just arch architecture, right? Okay, which is still pretty fucking cool. <laughs> okay, in all fairness, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, in 1957, mm. uh, him and Leela, his yeah. wife, okay, um, did this this thing called a fellowship to the the U.S. Right? Mm. And it's, it's not a really re religious retreat or anything, oh. right? I know because at first I was like, what is that. And I learned about this this thing. I guess what it is 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 they they kind of went abroad to study the cultures in other countries oh. to see because because design was very different in U.S. than it was, in, it Italy. was in Italy. Okay, right. yeah. so and um and and it was this you know exploratory few years mm -hmm. where he started really you know it exposed him to you know just design different than what he knew and this is where a lot of his beliefs started coming in because mm. again here we're talking about somebody who was um, an architect and training to be an architect. Architect, but he started becoming interested in graphic design, and then uh, North America was really pivotal for him for this, right? Oh, okay. It was it was a huge thing. Um, you know, unfortunately, her visa ran out. Oh. <laughs> And so they had to go back to Italy. Okay. But, you know, when they went back to 1960, him and her, uh, Massimo and Lila, or Lila Massimo, they actually co-founded a design firm called Lila and Massimo Vignelli Office of Design and Architecture. Uh, okay. It wasn't a branding well, expert uh, yeah. by any means, but I mean, it was very, it was, it was this business that really um, took him to the next level. And yes. when he actually got serious about graphic design. Mm. So it's, it's not that he completely paused architecture architecture right but he was really getting all into our into design mm. especially graphic design yeah and all this experimentation you know got him incredible work with giant companies in italy right like we're mm. talking for back then you know he worked for companies like olivetti mm. uh, penguin books <laughs> okay um xerox and Pirelli, Pirelli, as in the tires, tires. okay? Yeah, yeah. And uh, he did corporate identity work for Pirelli. Not the actual logo, but some identity work. But it was so um, outstanding for the time. It was so unique. It was so out there that it's actually in the Museum of Modern Art in oh. MoMA, right? So... And, and this was like 1960, dude, wow. right? So and it's, it's fucking incredible that at that, and he, this is like He's, just ripe and young and yeah. just, you know, like Cutting learning. edge at that time. Absolutely, right? Yeah. So this was great. So this was going cool, mm. okay? And everything in Italy was going great with his, with, with um, you know, this business. And then he had met um, this other graphic designer called Bob Nurda. Okay. Nurda. 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 And uh, nice. Bob Nurda was also, you know, one of, you know, the greatest uh, Italian graphic designers of all time. Yeah. Really? Also went to history. Yeah. Mm. And uh, and coincidentally enough, Bob's wife was also a designer. So you got Massimo Jeez. and Leela. And then you got Bob and his wife. Oh, okay. okay. Now, yeah. you know, there's yeah. not anything weird here. They got along <laughs> and there was a... <laughs> yeah. That's, you know, he, he was a... It, it went dirty quick there, didn't it? But <laughs> Sorry. <not> so much. <laughs> but what happened is, um, you know, they had got along well, right? Yeah. Um, they they had a lot of the same beliefs. You know, the, they, there was a good fit between them, right? Mm -hmm. They brought in a couple more people, mm -hmm. and they created this joint venture, okay? And this is when it got interesting, right? So they created this this new company called Unimark International. Okay, Corporation for Design and Marketing. And oh. the reason why this was really pivotal for the time is, I mean, it was a design consultancy, right? But it was the first design consultancy that actually had an international scope. OK, oh. so up until then, all the agencies, all the design firms, they were just like, local. you know, local, local, yeah. right? And big local, New York, yeah, yeah, yeah. L.A., yeah. Milan or whatever. Yeah. Well, these guys were like going international oh. and they went quick. OK, in no time, like they were in the U.S., they were in Italy, they were in Johannesburg, like they had offices everywhere. OK, oh, wow. and I mean, and through that, you know, like they worked with amazing companies, right? This is where, you know, a lot of Massimo's work for Knoll started, oh. American Airlines. Yes. Um, this is where the whole. New York, you know, the legendary New York subway map system oh, came from. Okay, yes. it was from this initial relationship. Okay, mm. so um, you know, and Massimo's role, of course, was to you know not only do the design work, but also kind of you know keep the design consistent throughout oh. all their offices to make sure that they all had the same belief system. Right? It was kind of like it was right. the first you know brand. Um, what do you call brand police? Yes. You know, and he was making sure that. And this is actually 
really important for later on in his career. Mm. That was his role to make sure that all the offices had the same belief, had the same ideas, were designing the same way, right? Ah. So this this was going great for for many years, right? So Milano and New York would have the exact same ethos, exactly. The, produce the same sort of work. and Johannesburg, yeah, yeah. everything and is Germany, all the same. and everywhere and that's, they and he were was responsible for that, right? So wow, again, that's cool, cool, right? Yeah, very cool, especially that's, for back then. Because yeah. keep in mind, yeah. right? Internet, you'd think, well, fuck, that's easy. Yeah, now. Back then, that is not yeah. easy, right? And that was where, you know, a lot of the brand guides came out, right? Mm. When he was starting to put things into writing and wow. started, you know, really coming up with his fundamental beliefs mm. on, you know, consistency and design and, you know, how to actually go about this shit, Jeez. right? So, um, you know, needless to say, not all things are, are meant to be, mm. right? Yeah. And in 1971, you know, he parted the company. He left. Oh. Right, and shortly after the company went bankrupt. Oh, geez. So we'll just say it was because he left. Okay, because it's a really cool story. But in 1971, you know, they moved to New York, yeah. and you know, they obviously, you know, that's when shit really started happening. Mm -hmm. And then him and Leela founded Vignelli and Associates in New nice. York, right? And they were a multi disciplinary studio. Mm. Okay, so now again, background in architecture. Yep. You know, now you know graphic design chops out the yin yang right <laughs> and this is when you know they develop projects in all fields of design mm. not just graphic design right and you know and this is where this old belief started coming about that design is one mm. and that's one of his most you know popular you know like uh, i don't know what you want to call it philosophies mm. or, or principles right that design is one right and that's basically that all forms of design regardless if it's graphic design if it's product design if it's architectural design oh, right you know follow the same common principles right. right and and again you know and this this was huge because this is one of his one of my favorite quotes of his mm -hmm. right is is you know the legendary if you can design one thing yes you can design everything exactly. right and this is what kind of led to this whole mentality is discipline about you know design is one right so basically that good design principles are universal yes right yeah. and coming from someone with an architectural background mm -hmm. right it's even more prevalent right you can yeah. see how this this is all starting to form together yes. right yeah totally started in architecture right went over to graphic design mm -hmm. was applying this shit now to product design so it made sense that his studio was this multi disciplinary yeah. studio yes which is kind of funny because it was kind of like what's old is new again even for him mm. Because at the beginning of the century, there was no such thing as a graphic designer, no. as an industrial designer, as a right. pro. You were just you a designer. Just, yeah, you just build it. Yeah, you just designed. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. There was a problem. Yeah. You would build it. Yeah. You would design it, yeah. and you were a designer. Yeah. Right. This whole specializing thing kind of started, then it faded, and now man is like fucking everywhere. Yeah. But I'm starting to see it kind of like fade back to just being a designer. I think people yeah. are starting to appreciate this whole idea that you know design good design is good design is good regardless design. It doesn't if matter what your what your discipline is regardless right? if yeah. it's ux yeah. if it's graphic yeah, exactly if it's product design yes if it's uh architecture if it's uh building furniture absolutely you know I mean? like right kind of, yeah yeah absolutely like we shouldn't we shouldn't be and again this is something that we're big fans of is, mm -hmm. is saying like you know don't just stay in your lane yeah don't be scared to branch out and because this is how you learn yeah Right. If you are just going to be a product designer your whole life, that's fine. That's cool. Mm -hmm. But after a while, you're just going to get stagnant. Yep. You have to learn. You have to, you know, explore other other ways of design, other other ideas, other ways of thinking, and yeah. kind of bring that in. And kind yeah. of expand your your design, your way of thinking, your look, your feel. Right. Yeah. And and to me, it sounds like he's got all the fundamentals in place. So it's like, yeah, I've got this background with with architecture, but it all these principles can work anywhere, right? Absolutely. Which is kind of a a heavy thing to think. Absolutely. But that must have honed his skills like nobody's it, business it to, totally did, to do right? that, right? It totally did. Man. And like he's, again, you know, his whole architectural background set him up. Yes, for, for a lot. He had all those fundamentals right in place, right? Right there. in place, yeah. right? Yeah. And like, let's think about it, right? So it influenced, it, it influenced his graphic design mm -hmm. incredibly heavily, right? Because yeah. it emphasized structure, mm -hmm. you know, foundation, clarity, and functionality. Yes. Okay, so yes. this is another part that Huge. we're going to talk about later, right? Oh, yes. So he viewed graphic design as just an extension of architecture thinking. Yes. Okay, this is not design thinking nope. shit. This nope. is for him. It was yeah. architecture thinking, right. right? This allowed him to focus on solving design problems, but with 
elegance, right. with simplicity, yes. which is another key thing that, you know, mm -hmm. another key item that we keep seeing coming back, right? Yep. Um, his foundation, um, his architecture was the foundation of his grid system, mm -hmm. which was also something he was extremely well known for, right? There we go. You know, the grid system, he championed that idea that a grid was like a map, Yep. okay? And that, you know, it helps you, dis it helps you figure out where to put things into a design yes right so it lines up it's grid it's symmetrical it's got space mm -hmm. right it's like kind of like it's kind of like lines in a notebook yes right yeah. it lets yeah. you know where, where to write right yes so and again so the architectural side was huge huge for him yeah. but of course that led to the graphic design and and which led to him having this incredible multidisciplinary um agency which with which now has this whole holistic idea about design which is what i love most oh. about it, right because it is it's it's all holistic it's all yeah. one yeah and it really should be yeah totally yeah absolutely that's yeah. that's the whole reason why i got into this space it wasn't so i could just do graphic design i love yes. graphic design it's, it's my yeah. passion yeah yeah right but i also wanted to do event work right. i also wanted to do video work i liked web right even mm -hmm. though my passion was graphic design it doesn't mean that that's the only lane i wanted to stay in exactly and i applied what i did in graphic design everywhere else mm -hmm. right so awesome yeah yeah very yeah. cool yeah. so so okay so now let's lead into the the five quotes, right? I okay. just uh, again, I have a million quotes of his. I love. I know there's so many. <laughs> the guy was brilliant, and you guys should look this shit up because he's you know he's got his quotes in nice, hell big, blocky Helvetica and <laughs> yeah. posters that and you can just, buy. Yeah, it's just so powerful too. Damn, yes. dude. Yeah. But okay, so you know, obviously, we talked about the one, right? Yeah. The the very first one, which I talked about, which is if you can oh, design, if you can design one thing, you can yeah. design everything. Yes. Okay. And again, I firmly believe that, right? Mm -hmm. Um. This one, the second one, right? Design is not art. Mm. Design is utilitarian. Oh. Art is not. Ah. Okay? So he saw design inherently as a utilitarian service, right? Yeah. Meant to serve a specific function right. and solve problems. Mm. Where he said art is not bound by function in any which way. It, no. it, it, it's simply an expression, yes. you know? So it, 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 it so it can purely exist. That's yeah. it, yeah. right? Like, I mean, art doesn't have to serve any function at all, no. right? No. It's it's what you decide you want it to be. It's what I do. It's yeah. what someone, you know, some of these great designers like Cause out there, you yeah. know, will we'll design this, this creepy looking character and it's <laughs> art and it's fucking awesome. Yeah. It doesn't serve any purpose. It, 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 does that does that help your back? Yeah, or right. does that help you navigate a website right. even better? No, it does right? not. It's it, it exists purely for the sake of existing. Exactly, and that's, and that's it, right? fair. But yeah, and that's I why it's that. different. Yes, than art. Yes. So that's number one. Okay. Yes. Another one. Uh, I guess this is technically quote number three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good design is a matter of discipline. Mm. It starts by looking at the problem and collecting all the available information about it. If you understand the problem, you have the solution. Mm. Okay? So again, he had this methodolo met 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 methodolo met methodology sure. Met yeah. <laughs> about uh, to design. Think, yeah. Right? Yes. And again, and this is what we always go back to, right? Yes. Design is a process. It's not just a matter of sitting down and creating something for customers, right? right? Like, you know, our, our discipline and understanding, you know, on trying to dig deep and find out what that true problem is, whether it's a visual problem, whether mm. it's a design pro like product, you know, related, um, ex user experience wise, this is inherently what makes designers different totally. than artists, yeah. right? So yeah. again, what we do is not necessarily in vain. It's not for vain. It's not for looks. Nope. It actually serves a purpose. Okay. Number four. Mm, okay. That's a, that's a good one. That's heavy. That's pretty heavy, right? Yeah. Totally. Okay, ready? All right. The grid is not something you see. It's like underwear. <laughs> you wear it, but it's not to be exposed. <laughs> So first off, yeah. leave it to a fucking Italian to jam in not only fashion, but his junk into a conversation, okay? I can say that because I'm Italian, and I do that every, every chance I get. But no, but but I mean, again, this goes back yeah. to, you know, his, his point about the grid system mm -hmm. that he developed and and he championed and yep. and he was constantly you know promoting right this grid system design is like a foundational element that while it's not necessarily visible mm -hmm. it keeps everything aligned and and, and structured it's it's yes. the foundation it, it just, totally is and this is straight from his architectural wow. box right that's awesome and okay and last but not least yep. styles come and go mm. good design is a language, mm. not 
a style. Ooh, Fucking love a that, dude. It's oh. a language. That's that's like deep Shit. cheese, but I can respect that. Yes. Right? Yes. But again, he believed that good design transcends all fleeting styles and trends, right? And it's meant to be, you know, communicative and yeah. timeless, yes. not trendy and fleeting. Exactly. Okay. And this is something that we're always promoting to people, right? Don't follow trends. Yes. Don't, you know, don't chase those trends. Good design, follow good design principles, and this will always transcend shitty, shitty in out trend stuff, yes. right? And what are we talking here? 70 years ago? Yeah. Well, no, no, no. 60, 70, 60, 50? We're talking the 70s. 70s, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Jesus. Yeah. Like, it's like 40, 50 so years ago. Far ahead. I know. <laughs> it's so cool, right? It blows my and again, mind. it was because of all of his experience yeah. doing the, not only, you know, starting out from, you know, the architect side and then, you know, going yeah. into the graphic design side, but yeah. then his experience, you know, at, um, you know, Unimark trying to keep everything, maintain everything across the globe, yep. right? Then his whole design is one idea and philosophy and belief, right? Yeah. Like that was huge yeah. for all this. So, yes. you know, and this is just, and there are so many more quotes. Oh. I could, We could do a whole episode just yeah, talk just about Massimo quotes. quotes. I know. Seriously. And maybe we will in the future. Yeah. I don't know how well that'll work, but, you know, <laughs> through all this, yeah. okay, through all, all of his quotes, through all of the teachings, everything I've read and studied and have known all the years, okay, what mm -hmm. I've done, kind of summed them up into five basic principles mm -hmm. that I believe he was kind of, you know, going for. And I'm, you know, hey, I'm sure there's more. I'm sure people dis can, can disagree. I don't know how you could disagree with this, yeah, but I'm sure you could add to this. I'm yeah. sure. Okay. But, you know, for today's podcast and how to actually compare this to, um, you know, modern day design and everything else that we're dealing with, um, I think these work well. Okay. Mm. So five key principles, I believe are his five design principles. Yeah. Okay. So number one, okay. Utilitarianism. Yep. Utilit, util, why do I say these words that I can't even, they look good on paper, but damn it, they don't come out of my mouth after a little bit of bourbon. Utilitarianism, okay? Yes. Which basically is this whole idea that design must serve an intended purpose above anything else. Right. Okay? Good design is not something that looks elegant, isn't something that's clean and modern and funky and, and you know, eye-catching. It's it a has, utility. It's a utility. Yeah. It has to serve it a purpose yes. to be design. Otherwise, it's yeah. just art. It's just art. That's okay? right. Yeah, so, serves no purpose. Utilitarianism, number one. Nice. I love number it. two, simplicity. Mm. Okay. Clarity and simplicity are paramount. Yes. He is of the belief that less is more. Yes. Okay. So again, I, I don't think I have to even say any more about that, right? <laughs> that, no, please. That is so universally fundamental. Absolutely. That, like that applies to everything. You know, everything that we talk about, we yes. talked about white space a couple yes. of weeks ago. Yes, less or, is you know, more. Back to that, cutting out all the bull and just kind of leaving the one single message to walk yes. away from. Our yes. logo concepts that we talk about, you yes. know, and how to yes. actually follow. So yeah. simplicity in design, right, yeah. is paramount. Yes. Okay, number two. Number yes. three timelessness mm. okay and a big proponent of this you know avoid trends and create work that endures time you know that's timeless and again we talk about this in our logo process right yep. make sure it's something that's timeless that won't go to style right number four grid systems Okay, mm -hmm. use grids for alignment, for spatial organization, for mm -hmm. foundational items of all your design work. And number five, typography. Oh. Employ typography with intention and with restraint, Ooh. right? And that's that's key. Everybody yes. can just go to Daffont and download everything and throw it all on there, but only David Carson can get away with it. Yeah, that's right. The rest of us yeah, we uh, don't no. even think about it. Right? <laughs> no, but again, he was he was mad crazy about typography. Yes, he had. A, you could do a whole episode just on his beliefs on typography, yeah. and he was the guy who only had six or seven fonts. I was just going to say period. he didn't have many fonts no. at all he had six and then uh, two weeks ago when we joked about bubble letters we gave him a seven <laughs> yeah, okay <right. laughs> but yeah he had only a handful of fonts yeah in his toolkit mm -hmm. and he he used those things so bad he designed them he kerned them yep. he would obsess about the space in between but again you know yep. using typography um with intention and with restraint i yep. think is kind of the intent here of this principle so Again, you know, summarizing his five design principles, utilitarianism, mm -hmm. simplicity, timelessness, yep. grids, and typography. Typography. Okay. Nice. So now 
if we were to apply this to modern day shit. Yes. Okay. And and again, right now it's like, well, how some of this we can understand, mm-hmm. but let's see how far we can actually take this, right? Okay. So um I've I've put them into real life ah, opportunities, right? Nice. So simplicity is key. Yes. Okay. Embrace minimalism and avoid unnecessary elements. Mm. Plain and simple across all your designs, right? Yes. Simplicity ensures clarity, ease of use, and especially, especially important in digital interfaces. Okay. So if he was alive today, mm-hmm. right, this is how he would take this, in my opinion, in yeah. my little, you know, <laughs> this, this would be the belief, right? Because yeah. I, I find that people just take advantage of digital spaces because it's so easy to add crap. Totally. I just had a huge meeting yesterday because, you know, we had clients who wanted to add a whole new section to a website and they were like, just, just tack it into that area. (laughs) No. And I was just like, (laughs) no, it can't. And, you know, and it's like, I went away with it. It's sad. It hurt me. And this was actually happened a couple of days ago. And I I literally like for days was trying to solve how the problem was. Yes. Went back to him. I was like, guys, listen, I'm sorry. Yeah. We can't do this because this is just, you know, like this is just slippery slope that's Mm going to kill us in the future. Yep. I proposed, uh, you know, a whole new navigation system that's still going to keep things clean. Mm-hmm. And in the future, we can keep adding under this new section. Yes. They saw it. They agreed with it. They were like, perfect. Yeah, yeah that easy. works. It makes sense. So there it's really go. easy to just add shit. Yes. Okay. In the short term, yeah. but long term, right. it's just a disaster. So remember, you know, simplicity is key for everything, especially digital interfaces. Exactly. And that's problem solving. Absolutely. Piece, that piece was. right there, too. Yeah, yes. actually. Oh, yeah, look at yeah. that. I, yeah. yeah, see? I'm a problem solver. <laughs> All right. Okay, number two. Consistency across platforms. Mm. So he never had to deal with all the different platforms that there are today. No. Okay. But, you know, using his principles, right, you need to ensure that your design is consistent across all platforms and devices to provide a cohesive user experience. Yeah. Okay. Now we're talking about social. We're talking about your web experience, your app experience, technically a mobile experience, mm-hmm. right? If you can push it even further, you know, not only, you know, your brand and marketing material, but like even the user, uh, like the human experience that people have dealing with your company and your product, right? Yeah. This is like an all-encompassing brand message yeah. that I think is, you know, probably one of the biggest parts of this company is, is you know, making sure that brands are cohesive. Exactly. Ac- across everything. Do you know what's happening? My beard is sticking to this. <laughs> You guys see in this, my beard is sticking to the microphone. I don't know how that's, it's like, you're going to start a fire static, there. right? <laughs> Whoosh. Spontaneous combustion, spontaneous beard combustion. Beard combustion. <laughs> it's going to make my microphone a little higher here. <laughs> that was the weirdest thing. Oh, that's funny. It's a little bit of ASMR for all you people out there. Right. A beard rubbing against the mic. You know what's funny? It was like in, in, in last week's episode with um, Dan, yep. there was this, this funny little um, murmur that would happen and somebody, you know, I, I think it was just in the in the exporting and uploading into YouTube and such. Oh. And there'd be these funny noises that were kind of like in some of the places. Really? And somebody commented to like, I think one of their beards is talking. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. We love you, Dan. Decided, decided to leave that in there. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, all right. Okay, back, okay. back to our sorry, list. Number sorry, two. Yeah. Number three. Okay. Yeah. Timeless over trendy. Ah. Plain and simple, right? Favor timeless design elements over fleeting trending ones. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because this ensures longevity for your work rel- and relevance in a rapidly involving environment. Yes. God knows how fast this whole space is, this is, is working, true. right? This is true. So that's how that works for this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number one, two, three, four, five, uh, whatever. Functionality <laughs> first. Yes. Okay. Going back to his whole belief on utilitarianism, right? Mm-hmm. Um, prioritize the functionality of the design. The design should serve a purpose mm-hmm. efficiently and intuitively, mm. especially in UI interfaces, mm-hmm. especially. And that goes back to the conversation yeah. that I had with that customer, right? Like you need to make sure that it actually follows a function yeah. first before being elegant and cool and pretty. Otherwise it is just art. Yeah. But again, this goes back to, you know, the whole utilitarianism side of his business. Yes. Or of, of his belief, his his principle. Yeah. He would never cram an entire section of a website into just to throw it in there. You know <laughs> what I mean? Just he, to throw he, it in. He would figure out a way around to make that Absolutely. User, user friendly. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. God, he would. He would just. He would kill it today. He would, because all the principles just kind of they, just, they, they, they translate so well totally, into yeah. this world, yes. right? Um, 
grid-based layouts, okay? Utilize grid systems for organizing your content, ensuring alignment, and, and a structured layout in web and app designs, mm -hmm. let alone in graphic designs. Yep. So I think that goes without saying, right? Yeah. People aren't using grid. You know, he talked about it, but this is how it would translate into our world right now mm -hmm. in the digital world, right? Yeah. Yeah. Respect for typography, mm. okay? Going back to the typography, choose and use typography thoughtfully, okay? And that's the key word. It's not just about readability, but it's also about conveying the right tone and the right character, Yes. right? So again, he for someone who only had a handful of fonts that he used on a regular basis, mm -hmm. he did this incredibly well. You know, he um, a big misconception was that, you know, he brought Helvetica or he invented Helvetica, yeah. right? He didn't invent it. No. But he did make it popular. He was one of the first, you know, people who started using it when he came in the 70s and brought it to North America, right? Yeah, and I think yeah. that's a little bit more accurate, okay? Yes. But he was able to make Helvetica, and, you know, he was able to make it sing when he needed to, make it be sad when he needed to, yeah. make it be, like, I mean, the whole New York design system is and, still in place. And that's the thing. It's like, that to me is like, that is the most, that that is his entire ethos it's his, it's his legacy yeah, right totally in that it's a map yep. of the one of the biggest cities in the world yep and it is so so beautiful, beautiful right like so neatly laid out yep. everything is absolutely perfect absolutely with that. absolutely and you couldn't you couldn't have rod rajan adani <laughs> yeah right? for that font that, right that would never work right so and and they have kept that thing pretty much the same, yeah, you know, yes, since the seventies. It's not broke. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's clean. It's intuitive. They yes. keep adding to it. Yes. You know, it's it. That one's in MoMA. That one's in his yeah. museum. Like yeah. again, it's just it's perfect. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's a. It's it's just functional, like at the top of yes. that game. Absolutely you know? right. Yeah, intuitive navigation. Mm. Okay, in web and app design, the navigation should be intuitive and accessible, guiding users seamlessly through the content. Mm -hmm. This is key, and this is what we focus on so much on our web projects. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just a matter of just putting all the content on a website. Anybody can come up with five menu items at the top and just spill all the information <laughs> yeah. on there. The whole point of this is to yeah. carry customers through a journey yes. and give them, you know, deliver them the content, you know, um, elegantly so they understand it, you know, put right. it in order, put it in a way that makes sense so yes. it builds on less. This is your job as a designer. Mm -hmm. So again, you're not just laying the shit out, right? right. You're you're actually giving some sort of, you know, intuitive navigation exactly. to the whole thing, yes, right? Yes, Perfect. Yes. All right. Ready? Clarity with data visualization. So we just talked about this, okay? What he did with the New York design okay. or with the New York, right. you know, subway system, right? When you're presenting data and statistics, right? Mm -hmm. Do so in a clear and understandable manner, okay? Yeah. Avoid overcomplicating visuals. Oftentimes, customers will give you a diagram and they just name the shit out of everything and expect <laughs> you to understand it, right? Exactly. It's our job as designers to bring that down, simplify anything, right? And make it impactful, but yes. in the right way. In the way, right way. Right? Yes. So again, clarity with data visualization. Again, yeah. this is this is how we would apply his design principles in today's design world. Design world, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Adaptive and responsive design. Oh, here we go. Yeah. This isn't me. I'm yeah. saying, we're not just jamming this in everywhere, yeah. right? This, <laughs> this is how this would work based on his principles and yeah. his beliefs, right? Yes. Design should adapt to various screen sizes, orientations, and offer a seamless experience on any device because then it serves a purpose. It's utilitarian. It's, yep. it's doing the brand justice and it's doing the user justice. Yeah. All right. He was already doing that. I could see that American oh, Airlines. He was. I could see that American Airlines shrunk down it like yep like yep you know what i mean like just the two a's mm -hmm. it, that would be awesome he he would he was ahead of this stuff. he was ahead of this stuff <laughs> like he absolutely was yeah um all right color with purpose yes okay going right. back use colors strategically to guide the attention and indicate interactive elements enhance the aesthetic appeal without overwhelming the user yes so again we're not talking about maximalism design here we're talking about you choose your colors wisely mm -hmm. and again make sure they have purpose and i feel that designers 
don't think about this one enough. No. They just color things because they look good and they're not looking for, you know, to serve a purpose, right? Like your call to actions should be a different color than, you know, your your highlights, your headlines, right? Because again, it just confuses people and they have no idea what they're clicking on, right? Yeah, exactly. You're going to have people click on internal links, <laughs> yeah. right? When really you want them to click on, you know, a CTA, a call to action. Yes. You want them to sign up for a form. You need to choose your colors wisely, wisely. and stick to them. Yeah. Um, hierarchy and emphasis. Oh, there we go. There we go, yep, right? This yep. kind of goes back with this. Establish a clear hierarchy in design to guide the user's eye and highlight key information, especially in web layouts and app layouts and digital advertises. Mm -hmm. You know, this is huge when we're creating all these like social ads or uh, sorry, the digital ads or the social material, right? Mm -hmm. Like you want to make sure that you only have a split second to get people's attention. Yep. So you want to make sure that that information is key and where it's supposed to be exactly. right delivering that message because again that's man you barely have a second to even kind of this is true yeah, yeah it's yeah you, you got to make sure it's right um accessibility Ooh. is essential you want to ensure that the designs are accessible to all users mm. including those with disabilities of course right this includes color contrast this includes size mm. this includes you know alternative text for images when available right if if he was designing for right now you know that he would be you know designing for uh, accessibility reasons, mm -hmm. right? And again, this is a topic that I don't think we talk about enough. No, you know, no. we we you know we touch on this, and and I think that this deserves a, a larger topic. And we have some angry designers that this is what they do, and this is what they specialize in. Oh. But you know, if design is to be utilitarian, if it's to help the end user, then accessibility is key. It's essential in everything that we do. That's right, right. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, content driven design okay uh -huh. let the nature of the content dictate the design mm. okay and that's key right ensuring that the two forms always follow the function mm. okay and this is timeless yes. okay this even goes before him this trans, trans this this form over yeah, function exactly. right or yeah. function over form but yeah. you know this is an argument that's gone on forever, forever yes. but what we're saying is make sure that the content make sure that the purpose you know drives the you know, aesthetics of yes. this, right? Yeah. Not the other, Not way, the other around. way around. Exactly. Because again, the whole point of what we're doing is to solve a problem. And again, whether that problem is a visual problem, whether, you know, it's functional, whether it's, you know, however you want to put it, you want to make sure that that problem is solved first yep. before you start worrying about how great it looks how thereafter. Great it looks. Exactly. Yeah. So, exactly. So I kind of figured that, you know, this is, this would be an interesting way to kind of apply, mm -hmm. you know, the five principles that, you know, I kind of summed up, you yep. know, what he's all about to what we're doing today mm -hmm. so i'm sure there's more i'm sure we could add more and i'm sure there's lots of room here for discussion and and even disagreeing for all means but you know i think this is a very practical way of taking his teachings his belief yep. to the modern design world that we know now yeah absolutely and 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 again like we have this this timeless factor with with this guy mm -hmm. like researching this going through his work mm -hmm. like noel the stuff he did. Oh my God, it was so beautiful. Geez, the null stuff, like, wasn't it? That's yeah. That is gorgeous. Yeah, and and it's it's so it's perfect. It's, yeah, it you could see it's the grid, the grid coming system. into play with Once what we start. Doing. Honestly, you guys, I challenge you, go look up some of his work right now after we've talked about all this, and yeah. you could probably see, you could pinpoint the grid. Yeah. You can pinpoint his beliefs and simplicity. Yeah. You can you can totally understand everything that we're talking about, and you can you can almost indefinitely see the mm. influence his architectural background has had on all yes. this, right? Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And back to your point about the colors. Yeah. You notice the colors in the in the New York City maps. Yeah. Beautiful. Like absolutely very right? contrasty. Yep. But not trendy. They weren't. They still work today. Absolutely they do. So it's just like that Man. that piece has transcended. It's been around for 40, 50 years. It's, I have it's, the, it's, the New York yeah. sitemap brain standards uh, manual. <laughs> You know, it's, I paid a fortune for that thing, yeah. but it is so incredible. It's it's stupid when you think just how yeah. how you know years and years and years, yeah. and this is just so it doesn't yeah it doesn't waver in nope, any not at all. form at all. Like yeah. it's so perfect, man. I know, right? Yeah, like that's the kind of stuff where like literally, and and I think there was one quote that you missed, and I thought was very powerful for him. Probably a few, but well, give, me, you, give me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was um, if you. Do it right. Yes. It will last forever. It will last 
forever. <laughs> it was just like shit. I know, I know, right? <laughs> and again, that that subway that, yeah, is, is one of those examples. Exactly. Because they still use it. Yes. It's it's everywhere. It's revered. It's used as, you know, like, you know, oh my God, case study pieces. Mm-hmm. People yeah. study this damn thing. Yeah. And it's still a functional element of that system. It's it does its job to perfection. And to perfection, <laughs> right? Like it's it's Man. insane. Yeah. Like uh, this guy, this cat is just like is beyond yeah yeah you know words of how how good he was you know although the world lost him you know like mm-hmm. some you know odd 15 years ago his his design you know legacy honestly will 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 live on mm-hmm. honestly probably for generations oh yeah totally they're going to totally. be talking about this how this shit applies to ai mm. i'm curious in the future right so Ooh. this is going to be interesting <laughs> this could be an episode that we'll do a uh. hundred years in the future <laughs> just our heads in a jar <laughs> <laughs> just floating around <laughs> Futurama oh, style, yeah. Oh God, uh, but no, but it's true. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think that you know people will still be studying him. Um, you know his his stuff is timeless. Um, I think yeah. so too. And he left a lot. He, he made a huge difference to this space, and you know a big part of North American scene, let alone the global design scene. Yeah, so, yeah. and I think yeah. that's and multidisciplined, right? Like across different, mm-hmm. uh, you know, subjects, different areas, absolutely. different areas yes. of, of expertise. He still. Like that's awesome. Absolutely, right? Fascinating. What to me. what he's done isn't just for graphic design. Yes. It really is applied to all facets of his design, right? And again, it's this whole design is one principle. Yeah. There's a documentary called Design Is One. Ooh. It's hard to find though. And oh. it's it's him. It's based on him and Layla. Oh. Um, but man, I can't find it. And I still haven't seen this show, <sighs> damn it. I missed it at the princess and oh. I haven't been able to see it since. And again, it's not very easy to find online. So mm. so if anybody has it, share, please. Yeah. Anybody <laughs> yes, let us know please. where we can see this. I'll I'll glad you know yeah. Amazon Prime US has it. Oh, it does. Not Canada. Not Canada. Of course. Jeez, thanks. Jeez, thanks, right? Canada. Share with the hosers, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> <laughs> we deserve it, eh? <laughs> All right. Well, I think this that was is, um, awesome. This, this is a nice way to wrap up today. This was great. You this know, was, this is a good week. This was a good researchy kind of thing because it was. It, was, it was fun looking into. It was fun getting reacquainted with all those old quotes. Yep. Yeah. You know absolutely. I mean? And looking at his work and just like, wow, it just. Absolutely amazing. I amazing know. stuff. Absolutely. The yeah. guy, again, so much. He left us so much. He really and, did. And again, if you just apply his principles mm-hmm. to your work now, again, you will succeed. Your That's design right. work will skyrocket. Yep. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Damn it. My beard's doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> All right. Well, with that being said, yeah. please, guys, you know, um, hit us up on our Instagram. Hit us up on our YouTube. Let us know what you think about this. You know, let's get some conversation started. It's mm-hmm. really fun to reach out and see people's, um, you know, thoughts and opinions on this kind of stuff. Yeah. Again, this this guy is timeless. His, his material is timeless. And I hope that, you know, some of you will actually take a step further and research more about Massimo Vignelli, yep. you know, forward. Yeah. You know, and honestly, even during the holidays this year, dig up some of his stuff, watch some of his interviews, read some of his material. Mm-hmm. It's fascinating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he is, he is hands down one of the most influential graphic designers, North American graphic designers, even yep. though he, he did immigrate. Yeah. You know, um, uh, what he left for us was just fantastic. And again, he loved North America. He loved design. It was the design here that inspired all of this. Right. So, so by him coming here, yeah. kind of essentially turned him into a graphic designer, maybe? Uh, I, well, I think it was Possibly. North American yeah. culture that yeah, actually that really did influenced him 100% because it was that fellowship right. that really introduced it to him and, and, and made him made him more aware of what was going on and right. how much he loved it. Because when he came back and they opened up their shop, it was strictly designed. Actually, mm. when they went back to Italy, it was strictly designed. Oh, it was. Yeah. And mm. when they opened up here in North America, that was the multidisciplinary that design, the, right? Okay. But when he left North America the first yeah. time to he go back, like, this is what we're doing. Pure graphic yeah. design. Nice. And it was really cool shit. So <laughs> yeah. check out some of that stuff too from moment yeah all right awesome well everybody Ooh. with that being said yeah my name is massimo and my name is sean stay creative and stay angry <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>